Our theme for today's episode is legacy. How do you want to be remembered? What kinds of stories will your grandchildren tell about you? How will you leave the world in better condition than how you found it? Are you making your ancestors proud? Oh yes, we are getting into some big questions today. We're gonna visit a historic home that became famous online and practically broke the internet. You're gonna meet an incredible friend of mine, a Broadway star and an entrepreneur named Robert. And we're gonna have some important talks about you and what you want your legacy to be. We all have a legacy to build. What's yours? Oh, hey, I'm Susan Hyatt, and this is Go Time TV, and welcome to, for the love of get your ass back in the RV. Welcome to the Road Trip Edition. I've hit the road. We're going to a lot of my favorite places to talk to some of my favorite people along the way. Right now, we're in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, Delaware, New York. Now we're in North Carolina. This show is all about getting more of whatever you want. More confidence, more success, more wind, more wealth, or maybe more adventure. Whatever you want. I want to help you get it. No waiting, no procrastinating, no excuses. It's go time! <laughs> Legacy. What does this mean? When I say legacy, here's how I define it. Your legacy is the contribution that you make to the world, a contribution that people can still feel even after you're gone. So if you're a school teacher, your legacy might be the fact that you taught over 10,000 kids how to read and write over the course of your life. That's an incredible legacy. If you're a parent, your legacy might be the fact that you raised three amazing humans who were kind, thoughtful, and generous. If you're an entrepreneur like me, maybe you want to reach as many customers as possible, have a positive influence on people's lives, and create major change in the world. What do you want your legacy to be? So here's a question to help you figure it out. If someone was giving a speech at your funeral or memorial service talking about your life, what would you want them to say about you? Would you want them to say, she was a firecracker who always spoke her mind. She stood up to bullies. She fought to protect vulnerable people. She helped thousands of girls to get into college. She was the first millionaire in her family and she inspired thousands of people to take charge of their finances in a whole new way. She raised thousands for social justice. She was a bright light in our community and prove that you can be incredibly kind and incredibly successful. Make a list of things that you would want people to say about you and then get to work. Make that list a reality. Begin today by taking the first small step. Become the kind of person you long to be or become that person even more than you already are. Take your vision and turn it into a legacy. We all have a legacy to leave. Choose yours and build it. It's time for the question of the day. And this is the part of the show where I share a question for you. Yeah, you, the beautiful person who's watching right now. Here's our question of the day. It's actually a fill in the blank statement, not exactly a question, same dealio. Here it is. Before I die, I will what? Fill in the blank. What do you pledge to do before you leave this planet? Will you write a book? Will you launch your business? Will you raise funds to build a new park in your neighborhood? Will you teach a thousand kids how to meditate? Will you do something to honor your ancestors and make them proud? Post your question down below in the comments. Sometimes a house is so much more than just a house. It's a symbol of hope and progress. It's someone's legacy. We're sitting outside of my friend Robert Hartwell's new home and he doesn't live here yet because he's gonna renovate before moving in and he has graciously agreed to let us be the first ones to peek inside. So let me tell you a little bit about the house. This property was originally built in 1782 and at that time in Massachusetts, slavery was still legal. The home was demolished and rebuilt in the early 1820s. 200 years later, it's been purchased by a young black entrepreneur, my friend Robert. 
His dream is to discover the home's history, uncover its secrets, fill it with love, and give it new life, and make his ancestors proud. Shortly after purchasing this house, Robert posted a message on Instagram and he wrote, I know this house is bigger than me. I wish I could have told my ancestors when they were breaking their backs in 1820 to build this house that 200 years later, a free gay black man was gonna own it and fill it with love and find a way to say their name even when 200 years later, they still thought I would be off the table. We are building our own tables. Robert is making his ancestors proud. How will you make your ancestors proud? Robert, you're a homeowner. <laughs> Isn't that wild? It's so exciting! Oh, thank you, friend. I'm so happy. And you know, this episode we're talking about legacy and you're building and continuing quite a legacy. And I understand that there are two women really important to you after this tour that you're like naming rooms after. Yeah. Let's talk about your Aunt Paulette. Yeah, so, you know, it's so interesting. I feel that what COVID has done, it's like, one, yes, we're all at home, but I think that there is beauty in that as well. Mm -hmm. Like, if COVID had happened, this house would not have happened. Right. In the sense that I think that you get the opportunity to let pain produce purpose, mm -hmm. you know? So mm. my uh, uh, Aunt Paulette, who actually, uh, Francis made this for France. me. France, I know Francis. all about it. I have and mucho, 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 mucho. Um, and so uh, uh, she, you know, contracted COVID and she went into the hospital and she passed away from the virus. And she passed away on a Friday. And then that next day, I. I just needed to get out of the apartment, you know, because mm -hmm. it, it was it was just too much in the city for me. So I grabbed a House Beautiful magazine and I like went to the dock, you know, on the Hudson River and I'm just flipping through and just looking at these beautiful homes and I saw this home in this stunning neighborhood and I was like, where is that? And I had never heard of it before, you know, I was like, the Berkshires, what in the world? So I went on to Zillow and I scrolled and then I saw this house and I was like, oh, that's my house. Like that is my house. I am getting that house. Um, and so the next week I came to see the house. And then the following week on Juneteenth, I paid for the house. On Juneteenth. On Juneteenth. Um, and then the following Wednesday, I came and closed and got the keys. So the front parlor, the formal living room where the adults will drink and play is going to be Paulette's parlor. Mm. Um, and, you know, this, I asked Frances, one of her um, things that she would always say to me was, that's awesome, Rob. And I just know that she would have come on this property and just said that's awesome rob and she would have just like had and she is having like the biggest shout hallelujah and so to know that that room will always be there and she'll always be there even for when i'm not here and when my children and their children's children aren't here like her namesake will still be here yeah. and she she left I mean, quite a legacy because the story that you told me about her is that she was the one when you had dreams of being on Broadway that was just like, hey, like you're you need to take care of yourself, not if you get an audition, but mm -hmm. when you go on audition. Yeah, you better be on point. Absolutely. You know, it wasn't it wasn't if it was always when that's her. And, you know, she spoke things into the universe and made you declare and made you say it. And so when I moved to New York, you know, graduating school with my BFA in musical theater, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I can't wait to audition. And then auditions are hard, much harder than you ever think they're going to be in school. Um, and she just always stayed positive and always stayed in faith and always made sure that whatever came out of my mouth was when and not if and can and not can't. Mm -hmm. um, and so she, uh, you know, she and my aunt Deb were 
hugely influential in that first year because so many people don't make it after that first year right. of, you know, moving to New York City. And, and what do you think the major difference is that you see tons of kids, you run an amazing company that brings Broadway to kids, trains kids how to claim their Broadway dreams. What do you think the biggest difference is between the people who make it past that first year and the people who don't? Their support system. Really? I that is not what I thought down, you were going to yeah, say. I think it comes down to their support system because one obvious, like the obvious thing is like you got to walk in a room and you have to be talented. You right, know, like you've right. got to be good. You've right. got to have the goods. You have to be a kind person. But I think it comes down to what happens between here and there. You mm -hmm. know, what happens between getting the audition and going into the audition room. Mm -hmm. It's the people that you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. So if you surround yourself with people that are saying, when you get to Broadway, mm -hmm. when this audition goes well, you're just like, I'm going to win. Like mm -hmm. there is no way that I'm not going to win, you know? Right. So I, I, I see it, you know, speaking of the kids that I get the opportunity mm -hmm. to work with, I see a completely different trajectory for the ones that have parents that are all in, mm -hmm. that are out trying to educate themselves, are out saying, hey, I don't understand what this is, but like, I got you, boo. Mm -hmm. And then the students that are like, working so hard to pay for it on their own and their mm -hmm. parents don't come to the performances or mm -hmm. their parents don't show up for the work and you just know it's gonna be very different for them. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it comes down to support system, like who you flock with, which is like, how do you do things like this? Like you have friends like Susan Hyatt who are like, <laughs> we're gonna be extra and we're gonna like, but seriously, you have always encouraged me to think bigger mm -hmm. and to act bigger and to do bigger. But it comes down to like, who's who's in your squad? It is true, we have an amazing squad. Yeah, we do. Um, what was it that Alex was saying the other day? Our squad text is like a combination of um, a, a TED talk and something else and it was like it's like TED talk but Super Soul Sunday yeah. but also a sketch comedy yeah it's a sketch comedy it's just it's all of the things yeah no but you are also the one in our squad text that's always you're carrying the legacy of your Aunt Paulette because you're always like I don't want to hear the words like it will see if it works out like it will work out it will work out don't put Oh, right. We, right. we always have to, mm -hmm, we got to get it together because like, don't put those if vibes in this thread. Mm -hmm. Because I, I'm serious. I know that what you speak will be. You were like, after we did the town hall, yeah. I was texting. I'm like, did I say any like dumb white lady stuff? And you were like, do not put, talk about yourself that way. I was like, you're being unkind because you and Cora had sessions. You were, <laughs> by the way, you were incredible on that town hall. So were you. Oh, you stop. Um, oh, but you it, stop. No, you stop. Um, but it, it, yeah, it, it matters. Mm -hmm. It matters. And I don't think we even realize that we're doing it. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, I know. So one of the things that I've asked viewers in this episode, a statement to complete, question to answer, before I die, I will. How would you answer that? <laughs> before I die, I will meet the love of my life. Oh, yeah. Robert. Yeah. It wasn't who you met in Italy during the retreat. Okay, we're that not we talking. Went on. We're not talking about that. <laughs> oh, this is not. Edit that out. Edit that out. No, he was definitely not the love of my no. life. But he was an incredible Italian moment in memory <laughs> that I am an Italian so moment. grateful. It was an Italian moment. I'm grateful for. <laughs> it was an experience. The silver fox going to chime in on I that. I know the experience. Yeah. Mm. So you, before you die, you will meet the love of your life. Of course you will. Aww. Of course you will. Um, what's something that makes you feel rich that doesn't cost any money? Oh, oh, something that makes me feel rich that doesn't cost any money is random showering. That's not random. Like, I really do <laughs> feel really luxurious and rich when I'm like, I am clean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clean. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can't go with you. Y'all, we falling that, out of chairs that, up in here. That is the best Take answer. a shower. Listen. You fall out of a chair, too. <laughs> that, listen, that the 
changed my toilet paper answer. I I'm like, I, listen, pre-COVID, I was overstocked with toilet paper. These people, and I'm like, what y'all trying to catch up? Wait, 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 but here's the thing. The real of the real of this is that you actually are the one that taught me that. I did? No, you were totally the one that taught me of, because you were like my first coach. Yeah, oh Legit. yeah, that's right. You were my first, like you were the first like, coaching program that I ever paid for like that was huge for like I forgot. M my journey um, and you said what what does success look like to you what does it feel like to you what are things you know from your childhood from your life that you see from other people other families that look like success to you and then how can you start you know putting those things in and one of it's kind of connected to the house in the sense that I loved my you know I spent my summers with my dad in East Hampton and so those folks homes those big gorgeous East Hampton Bridgehampton kitchens with those like huge like you know stunning but I remember thinking oh my gosh they have all of this fresh fruit laid out in these beautiful bowls and that has just always been something that has mm -hmm. like been to me a success and mm -hmm. you were like well boo you go get yourself a white bowl you go go to Whole Foods and I started doing that yeah. and I started feeling like I started feeling what you talk about all of the time, like allowing yourself to experience it, you know, like you talk in bold. And mm -hmm. so that was huge for me that like you don't have to wait for the kitchen to be remodeled to have your beautiful fruit bowl with your organic cherries. Mm. You can do it now. Life is a bowl of cherries, Robert. When you take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> you don't stink while you're eating when you it. you don't stink. Okay, so there's probably a lot of people watching who are like, I hear this all the time from people who find out we're friends. Robert is so beautiful. He's so talented. He's so charismatic. He's got this special thing that I don't have. So I don't know that I could do big things or make a big difference in the world because he's got something I don't is the reference. Mm. What do you say to people who might be watching who are like, oh, he's he's all these things that I'm not? I think it's you haven't given yourself permission to then believe that you have it. Mm -hmm. Because I think we all, if you have breath in your body, you have the gift. Mm. It's going to make me you, cry on my own show. What will you do with it? What will you do with it? And so I think Are y'all gonna cry about this? <laughs> like, Jesus! But no, I think it comes down to like, what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. Because if you didn't <clears throat> have the gift, you'd be six feet under, but you're not, you know? So I think it just comes down to, do you believe that you have it? And do you believe that it's okay to share it? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, final question for you. Yes. Because you mentioned meeting the love of your life <laughs> and children uh -huh. and grandchildren. Uh -huh. What do you want your grandchildren to say about you? That he did his best. Hmm. That he did his best. Yeah. That I did my best. That's all. With that's what so time beautiful. I had, that I did everything that I could do. That's how I, I similarly say, yeah. I want them to be like, my grandma, she fucking did the damn thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me show you picture yeah, 85. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Receipts. <laughs> Receipts, yeah. I love you, friend. Love I'm so proud so of much. you. I hope that I get to come back and christen. Okay, we're going to do an Aunt Paulette exercise oh! right now. You okay. just said, I hope I... I will come Be back. Wait, okay, for Aunt Paula, okay, for Aunt okay, Paula, okay, okay. when I come back, when I come back, it's gonna be lit. I'm gonna have a custom gown made so that we get a proper boomerang coming down those stairs. <laughs> Done. Done. I love you. I love you. Mm. I love you so much. Truly. Yay! Go time. Go time. <laughs> that was so fun. I love you. This has been Go Time TV. I hope this episode has inspired you to think about what the word legacy means to you. How are you going to leave the world in better shape than you found it? What's your plan? Whatever it is, Boo Berry, it's go time. No waiting, no excuses. Go leave your mark. 
And if this show has brought some positivity into your day, click the thumbs up below. Do it, boom, subscribe, so you never miss an episode. I'm Susan Hyatt saying bye until next time. I'll see you at the next stop on this road trip. You only get one life, make it count. As a thank you from Go Time TV, we have a little something something. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Shut up. I'm a part of the squad. <laughs> I love it so much. Bear branded hand sanitizer. <laughs> I'm gonna be at my best in the most color that I've ever been in my life and I cannot wait.